All of us use the ability to access the internet wirelessly on a daily basis, so it makes sense to look at how this access is cryptographically secured. That's why we'll introduce you to important protocols for encrypting Wi-Fi networks such as WEP, WPA, WPA2, WPA3 and WPS in this video. You will learn why there are so many different protocols, what makes each of them different and which of them you shouldn't use nowadays. Let's start our journey with the first Wi-Fi encryption method developed in 1999, namely Wired Equivalent Privacy, WEP for short. Judging by the name, you might get the impression that this is a very secure protocol. It promises to provide as much privacy as a wired connection. As you might imagine, the exact opposite is true. WEP uses the RC4 stream cipher to secure data, which is already a problem since RC4 has numerous security flaws and that's why it's a popular basis for CTF challenges. The 40-bit long key in combination with the 24-bit long initialization vector can be cracked very easily. The probability of the initialization vector repeating after 5000 packets is about 50% and if an attacker can just listen in on the traffic long enough, he can break the encryption. This method is so insecure that it is almost not offered nowadays anymore, as exemplified by this snippet from my Fritzbox. The need for a more secure standard was high, which resulted in the development of Wi-Fi protected access. WPA for short. Instead of the insecure RC4 algorithm, a much stronger encryption is used here with the Temporal Key Integrity Protocol, TKIP for short. TKIP dynamically generates new 128-bit long keys for each packet. WPA comes in two flavors, WPA Personal and WPA Enterprise. While WPA Personal was used for home and small office networks, WPA Enterprise was mainly used in corporate environments. The biggest difference is a RADIUS authentication server, which is used with WPA Enterprise. However, WPA also had some security flaws over time, which is why WPA2 was developed, which was supposed to create more security. Instead of using TKIP, it uses the advanced encryption standard, AES for short. AES is a symmetric block cipher that allows three different key lengths, namely 128, 192 and 256 bits. Unlike the data encryption standard, DES for short, the algorithm is not based on a FISL network, but on a substitution permutation network. WPA2 is based on IEEE 802.11i and uses the counter mode cipher block chaining message authentication code protocol, CCMP for short. CCMP is included in round brackets when you select WPA2 encryption on your Fritzbox. Many people claim that the security of the WPA standard is due to the long name of the associated protocol, but the real reason might actually be the strong AES encryption. The next generation following WPA2 introduced in 2018 is WPA3. This is even more difficult to hack than WPA2 because an attacker must interact directly with the network for each password entry attempt which provides brute force protection. It offers several security features designed to provide more password security and more convenient use, such as logging in via QR code. The setting you see here in my Fritz box is the WPA transition mode. Since the WPA3 standard is still quite new, not all devices support it yet, which is why you can select this transition mode. Personally, I have encountered some technical complications when using the WPA3 transition mode, which is why I still use WPA2 with CCMP. From my point of view, this is secure enough according to the current state of the art and practically impossible to hack. Practically, not theoretically. Wi-Fi protected setup, WPS for short, allows devices such as printers to be integrated into the network without a password. How? Well, at the push of a button. 
With the WPS PPC method, you simply press a button on the VLAN router or activate this authentication mechanism in the Frix box under the tab WPS Quick Connection. If you now want to connect a printer, you also have to press a button there within the time window in which the VLAN router is in lock-in mode, which integrates the device into the network. Even though this may seem insecure, it is practically impossible to attack. On the one hand, an attacker usually doesn't know when the button is pressed. That means he would have to be permanently within range of the network and wait for the button to be pressed on the router. On the other hand, new devices are rarely added to the home network. In larger corporate networks, the situation may be somewhat different, but the infrastructure protects you. In addition to pressing a button, there's also the option of integrating devices via a personal identification number. In practice, however, the push button method is the most common. Thank you for watching and see you next time.